Hi there, my name is Pat Garvey. Welcome to Rhythm Magazine and this session on stick grip. In this session, we'll look at different types of grip, uh, the main elements of good versus bad grip. We'll explore stick grip essentials like the fulcrum, what matched and traditional mean. Uh, we'll look at the mechanics of a good grip and I'll demonstrate a couple of really useful resetting exercises. So, what is stick grip? Well, it's how we hold the sticks. It has everything to do with the sound we create, our technical development, and our ability to evolve as musicians on our instrument. Remember, apart from anything else, the drum kit is an acoustic instrument, and as such, it can only do what we tell it to do. And that all starts with our control of, and our relationships with, the sticks. So, first of all, let's look at types of grip. Now, there are many variations. However, the basic grip types are German grip, French grip, American grip, and traditional grip. You might hear German and American grip referred to as overhand grips, and traditional grip being referred to as orthodox grip or underhand grip, and French grip also being referred to as French timpani grip. American grip is a kind of halfway house between German and French grip. It's one that allows you to take advantage of the best elements of both of those grips. Now, before we get on to the essentials of stick grip, we need to discuss what's the difference between a good and a bad stick grip. Well, a good grip is essentially one that allows your body to work in the way it's designed to. It's one that's relaxed, one that's loose, although not so loose that you become a liability with a stick in your hand. It should be free of tension and free of the restrictions, musically and technically, that a poor grip will impose. A good grip is essentially one that doesn't force your hands wrists, arms into unnatural positions, and it doesn't require any overloading of muscle groups, ligaments, tendons, or joints. And it allows the energy you create when you strike a surface, be it a drum, cymbal, or other, to be dispersed evenly and in the most economical and therefore least damaging way possible. What's a bad grip? A bad grip is essentially one that doesn't allow your body to work in the way it's designed to. It's one that is restrictive and dysfunctional. It's usually very tight, stiff through the wrist into the arm. More often than not, there are rigid fingers hanging off in odd positions, which fundamentally change the shape of the hand to one that puts you at a disadvantage. It promotes high probability of injury through overuse, typically creates a choked sound, and there's absolutely no way of developing good technique from a bad grip. A poor grip is essentially one that forces your fingers, hands, wrists, and arms into unnatural positions and requires an unhealthy amount of tension to be used for something that is ineffective in the first place. Okay, so stick grip essentials. Let's start with the fulcrum. This has two main functions where the drumstick is concerned. The first is that it provides the optimum point of pivot for the stick in your hand. The second is that it acts as the stabilizing force for all that you do with the stick, static or in motion. The fulcrum can change depending on the type of grip you employ and at times how you're using it but the basic principle remains the same. And what is a matched grip? Well, a matched grip is exactly what it sounds like. It's a matched grip. Both hands use the same grip in the same way. It sounds obvious, but it's one of the most overlooked elements in terms of understanding the foundations of a good grip. What's traditional grip then? Well, in the context of its origins, it's very different now because it's evolved substantially and way beyond its traditional use, just as the drum set has and the things that we play on it. It's traditionally a left-handed grip, and my understanding is that it originates from a time that snare drummers would lead men into battle. The drums would be slung over their shoulder using a single sling with a single point of attachment, which would result in the drum resting at an angle. This meant in order for the left hand to comfortably play the drum, the grip and angle of the stick had to be adjusted to suit, hence the form and shape of the left-hand grip, and the term traditional. What's the difference in all these different grips then? In a nutshell, it comes down to the actual hand position on the stick, the way the body is designed to work, and therefore what you can do with it. For example, in an overhand match grip, the complex mechanics of the wrist that allow it to work as a gliding hinge are exploited. Your hand is on top of the stick, and it promotes the up and down capabilities of the hand and wrist, into the arm, through the forearm, elbow, and up to the shoulder. With traditional grip, it's very different. Your hand is essentially under the stick, and correct use of the grip promotes the natural rotation of the wrist, the forearm and the hand as a single unit. And whilst it also utilises the wrist as a hinge, it's not as exclusive in this area as an overhand match grip. 
So resetting. What do I mean by resetting? Well, the hardest thing for drummers can sometimes be what I refer to as resetting a grip. And I say resetting because that's exactly what you have to do to remedy a poor grip. If any of what I've mentioned resonates with you uh, from the perspective of a bad grip, then you'll be doing yourself a huge favour by beginning to work on resetting your grip. If you do something for long enough, use a bad grip for example, in simple terms it creates muscle memory. And when we're talking stick grip, it's creating this muscle memory from the biggest muscles right down to the smallest muscles. When you try correcting that, it can be difficult because you're changing the behaviour of the smaller elements involved such as finger position on the stick, wrist position and fulcrum. And because of that, motions become different. Your posture will change, your hands will be in a different overall position, the wrists will function differently, your arms will move differently and unsurprisingly, when you add all of that up, it can all feel pretty weird at first. So it can be a very hard thing uh, to persevere with for those reasons and more. But it's beyond worthwhile. How do I know? Simply because I've been there. Here are a couple of exercises to help you begin that process. Work on these slowly. Ensure you're getting your grip right. Exercise one, tap stroke exercise. Play from the wrist, not the arm, and keep all your fingers on the stick. I'm demonstrating eight with each hand for the purpose of this short video. But you should practice groups of eight through to one. The stroke should be controlled. It should start low, it should end low, and should only be played downwards, returning immediately to your start position in preparation for your next stroke. Exercise two, single and double stroke combination exercise. Again, I'm using tap strokes, so the same basic rules apply, technically speaking. I'll demonstrate two versions of this, one without accents and one with accents. I strongly suggest you practice it without accents first. Once your grip is ready to apply the accents, play those accented strokes from a greater height to achieve greater volume. Still from the wrist though, not the arm. Once your grip is working, you can begin to think about developing your stroke and building on the foundations you're setting for yourself here. Okay, time for me to sign out. Remember, this is about the difference between knowing what you're doing and not knowing what you're doing. And at the end of the day, you can give as many different names to as many different grips and techniques as you want. But what it all comes down to is what you do with it and how you use it and how well aware you are or not of what you're doing and how your body's functioning. So, I hope you got something out of this. Take care, look after yourself, and I'll see you around.